So as well as the studio team, it was about reaching out to other young emerging leaders within their field, either in jewellery or knitwear or hat design. So I'd worked with James Tapner Evans for my BA collection. Hey, I'm James. <laughs> I'm a jewellery designer at graduated last year. I approached James about the Machiavellian Maid's hoop of keys. James found this old tray in a charity shop and cut it up to create this bow handle and asked if they had any broken keys that they were throwing away. Yeah, that idea of finding an object and like a magpie almost, just then reliving someone else's life. So a lot of it is bits that originated from crockery, the earrings came from knife and fork holders, which very kind of art nouveau-y, then add this cluster of quite a pulpy chain with the pearls. And then it was those themes of growing up on a silver spoon, yeah. privilege is, is so tied up with kind of cutlery and silverware. With both of us, it's always about the fusion of like glamour and punk. Yeah. And I love the marriage of those two together. And I love the fact that you respect my ideas in that process and just let me crack on. Is it cheesy me wearing it for the interview? My name is Grace Alexander. Me and Max had worked together previously and we felt that this collection might do with a pearl piece. That pearl necklace was the chains of privilege. It really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Max sent me some reference images and then really allowed me to be free with it. I got to really have fun, play with scale. You can really feel this sat on your chest. I added the chains and the keys to keep that theme of the house going, to punk it up a bit. And I love it, and it's such an amazing collection to have been a part of. I knew I wanted knitwear in the collection. Yeah. And so nice that our pieces actually ended up together, because yeah. me and Cordy like, know each other. We didn't know for ages. It's <laughs> message me, she was like, our pieces are together from back to <laughs> And I was like, what? So the first collaboration was with Cordy Savile-Smith on the wings. I started on my knitting machine and then nothing was like sticking that much and then I did this tatting. The most incredible crochet technique that almost looks like lace. And then the bells came in quite last minute. Yeah, because you wanted the bells originally and then yeah. we left them and then it was nice because at the end it was like everything all came back together and you were like, <laughs> yeah. My main concern was that it wouldn't be Halloween or Victoria's Secret yeah. Angel and I think we're <laughs> successful. It's an insane undertaking, those wings. If anyone gets a chance to see the wings close up, you can really see time. And the second collaboration was with Isabella Egan. So, my name's Isabella. Um, I'm a knitwear designer. At one point, it was going to be quite fine and disheveled, but it didn't feel as aggressive and masculine and militaristic as I wanted. It's actually a crocheting technique. Um, it's done with a really big needle, so it's actually quite quick. While you were crocheting, we had <laughs> the studio team and myself studying the tassels. There's about four of us at one point, just like tying on all of these studs. <laughs> So my name's Mandy Gaffel and I'm a makeup artist. I first worked with Max at London Fashion Week. Anybody mm -hmm. who's worked with Max knows that there's so much attention to detail and I had a really great brief. And the fact that it wasn't just a character, there was this whole story about what the character had been through, what they were inspiring to do or to be and what their pitfalls were. So the makeup emulated that. Maxie was very collaborative. I was always asked, what do you think about this? I'm really a fan of no makeup makeup. So I was really pleased that we got to do some very minimalistic. I got into makeup because I love models. So I love features. I love the quirks. For me, it's not really about makeup, but it's about the individual. I love the idea of the kind of deconstructed lip, getting the shading, the shape right, because it was meant to be not perfect. When I just looked at the brief, I'm like, oh, I like this person or I like that person. But when you actually read the script of every character and you realise there's so much. I mean, people are complicated, right? We have lots of backstories, there's twists and turns, and that's what I really liked. One of the most important collaborations was millinery. I worked with Kate Sarsi, a BA student at Sanderson Martins. With the Three Footmen, the hats felt fetishistic and militaristic but also quite modern. These molded wool hats in perfect symmetry with a peaked front with shiny black patent leather and some form of fetishy language, be that like a stud or a metal ring. And then the ringmaster hat was actually initially for the poet, the idea of caged sexuality. And then without me really asking, Kate made a second option, this burst cage. And so the poet hat became this tweed, disheveled, top hat, a little bit more historical and more poetic. And then for this more deviant animal cage, it was the, the ringmaster hat. 